Since you guys love slow cooker recipes, I've got a new one for you today, and that's barbacoa. If you've never had barbacoa before, it's slow cooked meat that is seasoned with chilies and Mexican spices. And when it's done, it is so tender and juicy that it literally falls to pieces when it's shredded with a fork. But I have a feeling that many of you have had barbacoa at a Chipotle restaurant, and while delicious, it's not quite as authentic as a traditional Mexican barbacoa that's usually made from beef cheeks or even lamb or goat, depending on the region. I've enjoyed many of those variations on travels through Mexico, but today I'm gonna share an easy slow cooker version that uses beef chuck roast, along with all of those delicious Mexican spices and flavors. It's the perfect filling for tacos, burrito bowls, salads, and so much more, so let me show you how to make it. To get started, you'll need four pounds of beef chuck roast. Beef chuck roast is what's used in American pot roast recipes, so you can think of barbacoa as sort of a Mexican version of pot roast. Beef chuck roast is known for its rich, beefy flavor, and it's ideal for slow cooking because the long cook time turns what would be an otherwise tough cut of meat into fall apart tender and absolutely delicious shreds of meat. I have slightly over four pounds today, but anything from three and a half to four pounds or so works just fine. And then what you wanna do is cut the meat into large chunks, about three inches wide. They don't have to be perfect, but the smaller chunks will fit in your slow cooker easier and allow all of the spices and flavors to surround the meat. So add the beef chunks to your slow cooker and then set it aside. To flavor the meat while it simmers in the slow cooker, you'll start by adding one diced onion. If you've made my carnitas recipe, you know how tender and juicy that recipe is, and barbacoa is similar, except that it's made from beef rather than pork, and it has a different spice profile with a more bold, smoky flavor, while carnitas is definitely more mild. I heard someone use a coffee analogy once by saying that barbacoa is akin to a dark roast, whereas carnitas is akin to a light roast and I thought that was pretty spot on. But back to the onion, once that's all diced up, add it to your slow cooker. So talking about spices, you'll need three to four chipotle peppers in adobo sauce. A lot of people don't know this, but chipotle peppers are just dried and smoked jalapenos, and the adobo sauce is an earthy, spicy sauce made from dried chili peppers. Together, they infuse that wonderful, full-bodied spice flavor into a wide variety of Mexican recipes. In a seven ounce can like this, you might get seven to eight chipotle peppers, though you'll only need three to four peppers for this recipe. Of course, you can use more or less to adjust the spice flavor, but I think four is perfect. So just pluck out a few, finely dice them up, and add them to your slow cooker. And if you're wondering what to do with the leftover chipotle peppers in your can, because it's always a bummer to have half a can of something, I recommend you make a batch of my chipotle sauce, which you can drizzle on just about anything, or you can turn that sauce into my creamy chipotle shrimp recipe. See, you've got lots of options with a little old can of chipotle peppers. Okay, back to the barbacoa. Next, you'll add five minced garlic cloves, because the more garlic, the better and then squeeze a quarter cup of fresh lime juice. And always use fresh lime juice and not jarred lime juice. The difference in flavor is light years apart and jarred lime juice is just so muted in flavor. So definitely squeeze a few fresh limes yourself and then add that to your slow cooker. To add a bit of tangy flavor to the meat and juice, add two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. And then it's time for the dried spices, which includes one tablespoon of ground cumin, half a tablespoon of dried oregano, two teaspoons of salt, one teaspoon of cracked black pepper, and one quarter teaspoon of ground cloves. And then for the liquid base, add three quarters cup of beef stock. You'll also add three bay leaves, but before adding the bay leaves, use tongs to just mix everything together in the slow cooker to distribute all those spices and flavors around the beef chunks. And then to ensure the bay leaves simmer in the liquid that will form and don't just end up on top, I like to press them down the sides. Add the lid to your slow cooker and then set it for eight to nine hours on low heat or four to five hours on high heat. 
I always prefer the longer cook time on low heat. I think it just creates more flavorful meat. But to finish this video before sunset today, I am cooking it on high. And look at that. With the magic of editing, the barbacoa is now done. Use your tongs to remove the barbacoa to a cutting board and then use two forks to shred the meat into pieces. If you've cooked the meat long enough, it should be fall apart tender. If your meat isn't falling apart, place it back in the slow cooker and cook for another 30 minutes or more until it does fall apart because you really do want it juicy and tender. Use your tongs to remove the bay leaves from the liquid and then place the shredded barbacoa back in the slow cooker. The barbacoa will absorb all those deliciously spicy juices and stay so incredibly moist. And then you can keep your slow cooker on the warm setting and serve it straight up into tacos, burritos, salads, or bowls. I'll show you two things you can make really quick with your barbacoa, but first I'll just add it to a serving plate so you can admire the barbacoa all on its own. And if I'm serving it up this way for a party or gathering, I'll just garnish it with a sprinkle of cilantro and some lime wedges. All right, to make barbacoa tacos, it's as simple as placing the barbacoa on your tortilla of choice. I'm using my homemade cassava flour tortillas. And then add a slice or two of avocado, or if you have it, a dollop of guacamole. Add a sprinkle of fresh diced onion, a sprinkle of fresh cilantro, and to finish it off, a squeeze of lime juice. That's really all you need for street taco style, but if you've got sour cream in your fridge, as I do today, I'll just add a dollop of that as well for some insanely flavorful barbacoa tacos. But if you're craving more of a bowl, that's really easy to make as well. Just add a few spoonfuls of my cilantro lime rice, which I have a separate recipe for on my website. Add a portion of the shredded barbacoa. Add a few spoonfuls of black beans, though you could also use pinto beans or really any other beans. Add a few spoonfuls of cooked corn, and you could use frozen corn or kernels from grilled corn if it's summertime, and some diced tomatoes. If you don't have tomatoes, you could add pico de gallo or salsa, or you can just add salsa on top of the tomatoes, because why not? And to finish it off, add a few slices of avocado, a dollop of sour cream, or you could sprinkle some cheese, and then a final sprinkle of fresh cilantro. These are just two quick ideas for how to serve up barbacoa, but I'm sure you guys have even more ideas as well, so pop those in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, give it a thumbs up and share it with your family and friends. I'm gonna sample all of this delicious food in front of me, and I will see you in the next video.